Um, basically, ladies and gentlemen, what we are going to go over today is uh, we've already talked about how to graph something in standard form. We've already talked how to graph um, how to graph in uh, Laurel in vertex form. So now what we're going to do is convert, being able to ways to convert from standard form to vertex form. All right, you should be able to graph in both formats. Um, however, if we have an equation that's in standard form and we want to be able to graph it in vertex form, we're going to go and follow a certain process. And that process is what we call completing the square. Now, first of all, just a reminder of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That is your standard form. And we are going to want to rewrite this in vertex form. x minus h squared plus k. You guys remember those two forms, right? That's what we've done in the last two days. Yes, yes, yes. Cool? OK. So the main important thing that I want you guys to understand, remember when we did the little warm up? You guys had the, the binomial squared, right? Yes? Do you guys notice here that this x minus h squared, that's a binomial squared, right? So what we need to do is we need to create, out of this, we need to create a binomial squared. So what we need to do to get to this, to get a binomial squared, we need to create a what we call a perfect squared trinomial. If you guys remember when we were doing those factoring techniques, we were fa every single time we factored that trinomial, it created a binomial squared. Yes? Every one of the examples I gave you created a binomial squared. Those were perfect square trinomials. This is not a perfect square trinomial. So what we need to do is we need to create a perfect square trinomial. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take the first two terms, and I'm going to say I am going to create a perfect square trinomial inside of this parentheses. So to do that, step number one, because if you guys, if you guys tried to factor this, you wouldn't get what we did at the beginning of the class period. If you, could do, if you could do that, then you'd be OK. But in this case, this is not a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to put parentheses around the first two terms and say, well, if I don't have one, I am going to create one. So the first step, put parentheses. Second step is to take your middle term, divide it by 2, and then square it. So I'm going to take 4, divide by 2, and square it. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is equal to 4. Now you're going to take the value 4 and add it inside of the parentheses, and then subtract it outside. And I'll explain that in just a second. Let me just write this up there. OK. So again, if you remember when we were factoring, right? when we did the factoring on our warm-up, every single factoring technique we could easily rewrite as a binomial squared. Correct? Here, let me just do, let's just write one up there. Let's do one that you did. x squared minus 10x plus 25. What you guys notice is when you guys factor this, this is a perfect, this is a square number, right? Yes? So this is a square number. So if you wanted to square this, you'd say x minus 5 times x minus 5, which we said was x minus 5 squared. Correct? This, so when you have a perfect square trinomial, it produces a binomial squared. Okay? We want to get a binomial squared. To write something in vertex form, we want it to be a binomial squared. The problem is, that's not a square number. So if that's not a square number, you can't, you can't factor that to give you that. right? Try to factor this. If you try to factor this, what two numbers multiply to give you so if it had to give you 4? It's not going to be the same number. right? You can't even factor it with integers, correct? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, if I don't have a perfect square trinomial, then guess what? I'm going to put parentheses around my two terms, and I'm going to create one. Well, how do you create one? I should have written this down. You take b divided by 2 and square it. So, so, I, yep, so you just take b, divide it by 2, and square it. When I get b divided by 2 and squared it, I get 4. Now I add 4 inside my parentheses, and then I have to subtract it outside of my parentheses. And the reason why I have to do that, ladies and gentlemen, is because if you have 
if you have an equation x equals 4, well, if you add 1, let's just actually let's say this. Let's say you have an equation 4 equals 4. Well, if you add 1, you have to subtract 1 to still make the equation true, correct? So if I'm adding 4 to this equation inside the parentheses, I'm going to have to subtract 4 outside the parentheses. Now again, why are we adding 4 inside the parentheses? Because now, what is this? It's a perfect square trinomial. And now, what can we do with perfect square trinomials? We can now factor perfect square trinomials, right? To a binomial squared. So here, I can now rewrite this as y equals x plus 2 squared plus 3. Where's now, the huh? Where's the minus 4 coming? Since you're adding, if you're at, as I showed you, if you have an equation, 4 equals 4, if you add 1 on the right side, you have to subtract 1 on the right side. You can't just like add 1 on one side and expect the equation to still be equal. So if I'm adding 4 inside the parentheses, I'm going to have to subtract 4 as well to make the equation still balance. B over 2 squared. But what's that called? You're creating a perfect square trinomial. And then, um, I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done, not done, not done. Uh, no, 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 Ashley, not done. So now, if we go and look at this, just to remind you, if um, to go back over, let's just go ahead and graph this. So basically, the main important thing when we're graphing vertex form, do we have an A? Yes. Well, we have a 1, right? I'm sorry. Bad question. Do we have an A that's actually other than 1? No. no. So since our A is not, um, since our A is, uh, is equal to 1, then we know that the shape of the parent graph is going to, or the shape of the graph is going to be exactly the same as the parent graph. All I need to do is apply my transformations. So you can see my transformations, that plus 2 is going to tell me go to the left 2. And then up 3. 1, 2, 3. Then, as I mentioned, since it's going to have the same shape, since it's going to have the same shape of my parent graph, I can go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 2, up 4. And there you go. You're done. Now, we are not done. There are